Hey, what's up, everybody? It is your girl JoJo, and I'm here with the review for Make a Move. This is season one, episode eight or nine. Um, I will have it right in the description bar. I hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing well. Thank you so much for your patience on last week. I was not able to record a video. I was on the cruise and um, the Wi-Fi was just okay, but I definitely wasn't able to stream any type of shows and I was not paying. Uh, I wasn't paying for no extra Wi-Fi <laughs> to stream it. <laughs> but I did watch the episode, so I know I missed a good one. But we are back here. Um, and we are back to our regularly scheduled program. So let's talk about the show. So um, we open up with Ashley and Donald on a date and with Donald revealing to Ashley that he was married at some point in time. He was 21. They were married for a year. They had a very simple divorce. It was all a $200. They didn't have nothing. They didn't have any children. That's what I was wondering. I was actually wondering if the girl was pregnant since they had a very quick wedding at a courthouse. The witnesses were two strangers and Ashley was like, I done kept you around. How come you didn't tell me that? In all honesty, y'all, if I would have got married at 21 at this age, I probably not that I would have forgot about it, but it just wouldn't even have been something that crossed my mind. Like, oh, yeah, I was married before at 21 and we were married for about a year. Um, sounds like, according to Ashley, her and Donald are hopeless romantics and uh, she thinks that it is a good thing now. I think it's a good thing to be a hopeless romantic. Um, I think I've always told y'all on here. I don't know if I've said it, but I think to date you have to be a little delusional. <laughs> it helps if you're a slight bit delusional because it keeps you hopeful for the best thing to happen. Um, so y'all tell me, would you rather be a hopeless romantic or a logical lover? I'm more of the second one and it can get in the way a whole lot. It can keep you from getting hurt, but it can actually um, get in the way a whole lot. Um, but two hopeless romantics, let's hope they don't dive too, too far in and just throw caution to the wind and do something crazy, but they're grown now. So hopefully they won't. They're playing this card game and she asks, what do you honestly think of me? And he was like, is that what the card says? I'm like, yeah. well, I mean, what you think? She just making stuff up as she goes. And I like that his answer centered around Ashley's personality and who she was and not around what he could get out of her. Um, Y'all ever heard people say, ask somebody why they like you or why they love you and watch them name all of the things that you do for them. <laughs> so um, it was things like intelligent, you're intelligent, we match intellect, um, you're, you're amazing, um, you're, you're vibrant, you're like just things about her personality that he really loved. Um, and I thought that was great. Donald's one of the few people on the show that Ashley has dated that I feel genuinely has gotten to know her, um, and can actually answer questions about her and it doesn't seem forced or like he's just there for a storyline. Um, so I thought that part was good. Um, he says healed, which I thought was interesting. That means him and Ashley must have had separate conversations because she, from what she's shown us on the show is not, to me, it's not giving healed. Is it giving healed to anybody else? But I still thought that they had a good date. I thought the card game was a cool, if you've never done it before, you guys, when you're dating or if you're already in a relationship and even with friends, um, get some of those like discussion card games. I've played, um, we're not really strangers. I've played the friend edition and it was really good for me and my best friend. Um, I've played let's get deep with a guy I was seeing um, and that was fun. So those card games can really open you guys up to some deeper discussions um, as it did for Ashley and Donald. So I thought their date was cool. What did you guys think? And how do you how are y'all feeling about Donald at this point? And do you believe that Ashley is showing up healed in this process? Let me know. All right. So if I sound weird, y'all, I'm recording on a device that I don't normally record on. So hopefully I don't sound different and hopefully this actually works <laughs> and I can upload. All right. So next we have, um, why am I about to say Camille? That is not her name. Cameron and, uh, old girl, y'all know who I'm talking about. I don't know why I can't remember her name right now. So she is going to his house and 
he definitely has a bachelor pad. <laughs> um, but at least it wasn't dirty. Okay. At least it wasn't dirty. Um, but you know, you see a clothing rack in the living room, you know, the couch is covering up a random door and, uh, you got a pit bull. I said, oh yeah, this is definitely a man's place for sure. You can just tell when a man does not have a woman living with him. It just has a look and all the ladies know what I'm talking about. His place had the look. So they are discussing where they are. All right. As far as in their um, relationship or whatever you want to call it. And so the producers are so shady because she says she's going to his house for the first time. And they said, you sure about that? I said, oh, <laughs> not them calling you out, girl. Is it not your first time being over there? Um, She had to like it was her first time. So they start talking and it's all just about basically who's gonna move where now this actually annoyed me because the show is called make a move and from my understanding the ladies were coming to new orleans to possibly make the move for somebody in new orleans yes or no so i don't know if people feel like cameron is being difficult or closed-minded i don't think so because unless this was discussed when you signed on for the show that you might be moving I was under the impression that the ladies were talking about making a move. So for them to be sitting here discussing DC and if Cameron would possibly be comfortable moving to DC and Cameron is clearly showing that that's not what he's trying to do. I don't, I don't really see what the discussion is about. Now I know that you can do, I just told y'all I'm a logical lover, right? So don't listen to me if you are a hopeless romantic, but I always feel like if you have something really good going for yourself, if you have a mold for yourself, if you have a plan for yourself and that plan is in motion where you are, I, I wouldn't move. OK, I wouldn't move. I understand why Cameron does not want to do it. It is a huge risk to uproot your life and move for somebody. It's an even bigger risk when you're uprooting your life and moving for somebody who knows already where you live they knew where you lived when they started falling for, <laughs> for you guys i'm tell i've been in i'm i've been in this situation that's why i'm talking about it and so for her to expect for him to move to where she is when she went into the situation knowing where he lived and knowing that she possibly might fall for somebody in new orleans that doesn't make sense to me um and i don't agree i just don't agree with it i don't um, all of his business seems to be there. Um, I know that she does personal training. She's also a makeup artist. I, is that, I'm, I'm, let, let me not be shady. I was about to say, is that not a job that can move? But I, I don't really know. Um, but maybe most of her clientele and what she does is in that area. It just sounds like to me, it's not going to work because she is suggesting that he be open-minded she's talking about well i think i'm being open of course you're being open you came on the show to make a move i don't know why you're not surprised that he's not being open because he didn't come on a show called make a move not not for <laughs> well, he did but not for him he came on a show to meet a lady who was willing to make a move to new orleans i'm pretty sure that's how the show is set up y'all correct me if i'm wrong so if anything else was going to happen, I just think that that was like, I don't know. I just don't, I, I, I don't think it's going to work. He's not going to move. She sounds like she doesn't like New Orleans and she doesn't want to move. So we can go ahead and cut our losses and move on. But what do you guys think? Am I looking at this crazy? Because that's how I'm looking at it. Sharice is getting another opportunity to pick some keepers because she doesn't have any. And, um, I don't, I'm not feeling it. Like Sharice just strikes me as a person that's comfortable being single. Um, her and Ver Vernicia actually give me those vibes. Like, I just don't think, I, I don't want to say, I don't believe they don't want anybody. I do, but I think they're very comfortable with themselves and how their life is set up. And they're not really all of that pressed, which is good. I mean, I'm not saying you need to be pressed, but it's just kind of like a, I ain't really, I'm putting forth a little bit of effort, but I ain't really going above and beyond. Like, you know, if I like you, I like you. If I don't, I don't, whatever. Um, Sharice is very dry. It's very hard to sit and watch her on a date. Um, she often talks about how the men are not giving her conversation, but she literally says the same things 
every single date in almost the same tone in the same way. Um, do you work out? Do you like to travel? Like, you know, just the same stuff. So she goes on a date with Nick. Nick is cute. Apparently they were giving each other eye contact at the mixer. He has a high top fade. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing is wrong with that. I just haven't seen that on a grown, grown man in a long time. Um, but he's attractive. He has a very nice body. Of course, Sharice notices it. He notices hers as well. Um, she does Pilates. He lifts weights. And she says on the date that they have a lot of chemistry. And they do, but it's physical. You know, it's more sexual. I don't, I didn't really hear them say anything profound. She even said, I wonder what your, she wondering what he might look like underneath, you know, what his chest might look like. And I say, Sharice. Now, you're normally not this forward girl, but even even Nick was flustered. He was like, oh, uh, well, I mean, I guess you might find out. I said, Nick, you weren't ready for that, was you? <laughs> um, but this is after she asked him if he could cook, which I actually thought was a cool question because normally they ask us that. I'm going to start asking them, can you cook? Can you clean? <laughs> can you give birth to children? <laughs> Uh, are you a nurturer? Um, but that's what she says. Well, you can do it without the apron. So suggested he could cook with no clothes on. I said, girl, what are you cooking? Don't let him make you no grits. Have y'all ever tried to make grits and you ain't had no clothes on? <laughs> I got some spots on my arm right now uh, from trying to make some grits uncovered. But anyway, y'all, um, yeah, Sharice's date was what it was. It was cool. Um, she's gonna go actually on another one because she's gonna do two dates, I believe. Or oh, wait, 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 wait. No, she's already had one date. So um, yeah, I guess we just get to see who you know she decides that she's gonna keep. So Vernisha goes on a date with Tabari. Am I saying it right? <laughs> uh, Tabari is funny to me. He just comes off his gimmick. And he's like, I right, bought some long stem roses i went on a date with the lady and she told me she liked long stemmed roses <laughs> um he spends most of his time in mississippi due to his child vernisha wants to know how that is going to affect their relationship she signed on to possibly move to new orleans but not not Missis mississippi was not something she signed on for um uh, he tells him well you know sometimes two people you know they do he was talking in a roundabout way and saying sometimes two people meet in the middle she ain't talking about meeting the middle she asking you about this whole mississippi situation and if this is going to work you know i want my person around me um long distance wasn't something that i really considered which is why she said she was considering the move to new orleans but I moved to New Orleans and then you're going to be in Mississippi. I'm just trying to figure out how that makes sense, which is a valid question. I don't know. I don't see it for Tabari and Vernisha either. I don't see it for nobody. It's ready to love all over again. So then we get what our prospect that we did used to have, Zadia and Cameron. And I want to say, I don't know if it was in my comment section or someone else's, but somebody called it so clean on Cameron and Zadia. Somebody said Cameron is about to break up with Zadia. Like he's about to get distant with her. And they were 100% right. Um, Cameron pops over to the house unexpected to talk to Zadia to say things or, you know, things have been, I mean, I really wasn't expecting something like this to happen, like meeting you and stuff. Why weren't you expecting that? Why did you come onto a dating show? Did you just come for exposure? Because now you're telling on yourself, why did you come over here if you weren't really serious and intentional about meeting somebody? So now you now you lying. And see, this is what I be talking about when you y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get the let me get the strain out my voice. But so many times we will tell young ladies to go with this guy, talk to this guy, date this guy. Don't date this guy because he's not intentional. He don't want nothing. He a player. Cameron has admitted that he is one of the nerdiest of the nerdiest and still did not come on the show atten intentionally. There's no way he did. He's already saying, I wasn't expecting this to happen. I didn't think I was going to fall for anybody. But you came on the show to date when intention, knowing that things were going the way they were going with your business. You knew you were going to be busy already. So did you come on the show to play and have a good time? And now you don't mess around and got caught up. Maybe that's what's happening. I'm not saying that things like that don't happen, but when you move in with intention, you do intentional things. You move when you're ready. 
So if you weren't ready, you wouldn't have came onto the show in the first place. You were ready for fun and games and you got more than what you bargained for. And now you're trying to pull back up off of it. But Zadia says she ain't having it. So he's doing all that mumbling, talking about, I just don't know with my business. Like you have other guys that you're dating. And if somebody else is ready to step, obviously nobody else has been ready to step up to the plate. That's why she's kept you around Cameron. He was pissing me off. I don't like, let me, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't like what he's doing. I really don't like what he's doing because what he's doing is he's trying to put the ball in Zadia's court so he don't have to be the bad guy and break up with her. And a lot of people do that. And Zadia, I'm telling you, I see myself more and more every day. I will not allow you to put the ball in my court. I won't do it. If you want to stop dealing with me, then you better say it because all I'm going to do is put it right back in yours. So what are you saying to me? And she asked him, do you want me to let you go? Uh, and he wasn't expecting that. He was really expecting Zadia to say, you know what? Okay, I understand. I'm going to have to make a decision as to whether or not I want to keep you around. Then he was going to be like, whew, she going to get rid of me. I ain't got to be the bad guy. I ain't got to be the one in the wrong. But you are wrong for how you're doing this. If you know you're going to be busy, if you know you can't step up to the plate, if you know you don't want to date her, if you know that you don't want to make a move and all that other stuff, then just say, you know what, Zadia, we want two different things. I really like you. I love showing you around the city. But I think we're going to have to end this here. But you don't want to do that because you still want the fringe benefits while also not really being all that interested. Ooh. You think you nickel slick, but I got your penny change. That nice guy shit ain't fooling me. So him and Zadia, they going to stay in it because Zadia is just like, look, I understand life is life and you don't expect for certain things to happen. I'm right there with you. I didn't expect this to happen either. I said, well, Zadia, what you come on the show for? If you wasn't moving with intention. Are both of y'all playing games with me? Because I feel like both of y'all playing games. What do you guys think? How y'all feel about it? Let me know. All right, y'all. I done calmed down a little bit. Y'all got to excuse me, okay? I um, it, It's the first day of my woman time. And baby, I'm hell on day one. I mean hell. So if I sound angry, <laughs> it's because I am, child. So they meet up with Tamika and I've decided I don't like Tamika. It's not because it's the first day of my lady time. I think I've been not liking her, but I don't like her for real now because I'm, I'm just I'm just real about it today. I don't like her. <laughs> I don't know what it is about her. I just don't care for her. So <sighs> let, me, let me call down. <laughs> um, we we got to we're about to have a mixer again now. Of course, the ladies discuss their keepers with Tamika and uh, some of the issues that they might be having, specifically Zadia and uh, Ashley, you know, with the whole marriage thing. So she lets Sharice know that she's going to invite both of her guys and at the mixer. She has to make a decision. Now, I know you guys want to jump straight to Sharice. So let me get the other people out the way. For a minute, Zadia act like she wasn't going to ask Cameron to stick around we knew that she was. Cameron is going to pull another okie doke on Zadia. I don't know exactly how he's going to do it. I think he's going to either not show up to something to piss her off or he's going to try to back out of this again and blame work. I'm not really sure, but he wants to leave. He does. And he's going to try to figure out another way to do it. Pissing her off is way number two. Next, Vernicia keeps Tobias around, or is it Tobias or Tabari? Tabari, I don't see it for him either. Um, he's coming off gimmicky to me, is given car salesman, but it doesn't surprise me that she's going to keep him around. I just don't know if I see that working out for them in the long run. And for some reason, I feel like Jabari might be somewhere lurking in the background. Ashley and Don are going to be okay. Um, Don, you ain't got too many more times to forget something. Now, I started with them text messages. Then you don't forgot to tell people you were married. I'm going to need you to get your remembrance up. Don't do no more poetry on here because it wasn't all that. I don't want to hear it no more. But Ashley's going to keep Don around. He says that him being married before doesn't have anything to do with how he feels about marriage. Now, he still wants to make those type of steps. And um, he did specifically say, I still want to make those steps with you. Um, and it's always important to, to differentiate between the two because that, that makes a difference in whether they see it with you or whether they just see it, period. Um, 
Then we get to <laughs> Sharice and her decision. Now, Sharice gathers the ladies together, and this is when Sharice finally revealed openly, because she'd been revealing it, who she was and how she dates. And Vernicia did too, low key. So she gets Vernicia and Zadia over there because she just don't know what to do. I can't make a decision with these two guys. And Zadia is like, well, you said that conversation is really important to you. So let's base it off of that. Like who has the better conversation? And she says, Lou, is it Lou or Drew, y'all? I'm going to call him Lou Drew because I can't remember. Um, but Nick does have conversation too. But with Lou Drew, it's a lot more in depth. And Zadia was like, well, I mean, you said that was important to you. Vernicia says, well, conversation is very important, but like, you know, uh, what did she say? Um, not charisma, but she said, um, basically like if y'all are feeling each other, like look physical, physical connection is connection. Physical connection is, um, also important. So, you know, is Nick, do, do he talk? Cause if he talk enough, you know, that that's enough to get the other stuff going. I said, Vernicia, but you know what? It just goes to show that different things matter to different people. And one of the things that I will say, even though I feel like Sharice wouldn't have made the choice I would have made, I feel like Sharice made the best choice for her how she dates and what's important to her. Because it was in that moment that we learned that all that stuff Sharice says about communication and how it's the most important thing wasn't really true. That's my only problem with Sharice. I don't care that she's superficial. I don't care that she dates for looks or money or who can spoil her. I don't care about any of that. I don't care what people are looking for when they date. What I care about is when you try to say you're looking for something else in order to hide what it really is that you want. Stop saying that you're looking for a man that communicates. It's not, tr you, it's not true. You're looking for a man that communicates enough to get a passport and to talk you out your draws. That's it. That is all and that is it and that is fine. I just don't like it when people act like they're looking for so much more um, when really you just, you, you want something else, right? So, when she sent Lou Drew home, I felt bad for him because he had bought a gift and he really is a good person, but he's not compatible with her. And it would have been a waste of time on his part pursuing Sharice when he knows he knew that Sharice wasn't compatible for him. He could tell if he couldn't tell from the first couple of interactions with Sharice, then he too was chasing after the wrong thing. And this is the thing. When you become of a certain age, all of that excuse making, I didn't know and I wasn't sure I was trying to give this a chance. It's just baloney. Once you reach a certain age, you know what you want. You know what you're looking for. And whether it's good or bad, whether it's superficial or not, it's what you're looking for and it's what you want. So go with what's going to be the most compatible for you now so you don't have to live in the consequences of the decision later. If you know you are a very deep person, like me, for example, I know that I'm a very in-depth person. I know I like deep conversation. I know I like to dive deep. I know I like to get into some stuff. I would think, you know, I'm somewhat emotionally intelligent, not all the time. And so it would do me no good to get with a very fine man who was dumb. That would get on my nerves, okay? The same reason I picked him would be the thing that got on my nerves later. The fact that he was cute was good in the beginning, but in the end, it's not going to be enough. So you have to choose what you're the most compatible with. And Lou would have had to be choosing a woman he wanted to learn who had some layers to her. Sharice doesn't have any layers. She's very surface. She's not deep. There would have been nothing else for him to learn or do with Sharice. She would have just been a pretty face. And that would have eventually gotten on his nerves in the long run. He would have loved to take her around, but that would have been it. Vice versa with Sharice. He would have been great to converse with for a little bit. But after a while, she would have got um, bored with him. So even though some people... People saw it as her making a bad choice. I saw it as making a little choice based on what she wanted, even though what she wants is probably not good for a full grown adult to be focused on in a relationship. Child, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. And her and Vernicia got a similar mindset. Vernicia just wrap hers up in a country voice and a little more um, humbleness. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think I think the mindset might be very, very similar. They have to be attracted to you to even pay attention to what's coming out of your mouth. And that's not me suggesting that you should just date a ooga booga. But what I am saying is sometimes, like Zadia said, that intelligence can lead to more, not intelligence, that conversation can lead to more chemistry down the road.
but you know some people ain't doing all that we gotta have the chemistry straight off in the beginning and uh you can't teach an old dog new tricks and i'm not about to try so you guys let me know what y'all thought about that uh like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys for the next video bye